Legendary music executive, that would be the one and only Clive Davis. He has signed, as you know, some of the biggest names in the business, including Barry Manilow, Patti Smith, Billy Joel, Earth, Wind & Fire. The list is very long. Davis celebrated his 90th birthday earlier this month. It was a star-studded event, including an impromptu performance by one artist that he signed, the lovely Alicia Keys. <laughs> <laughs> Clive, we talked with Clive Davis about the birthday milestone and launching the careers of some of music's biggest superstars. I'll tick off the names and you just give one sentence. Janis Joplin. Electrifying, hypnotic, a white soul system like no other. Aretha Franklin. one of the most nurturing, satisfying relationships that I've had from music was with Aretha. And Bruce Springsteen. There's no one like Bruce Springsteen. He not only is a brilliant poet laureate, to me, he became the best rock performer ever. Nowadays, a lot of artists become very famous very quickly on social media because their music goes viral instantly. Do you think it's harder or easier to find talent today? It would be harder because right now there's no Bob Dylan. There's no Bruce Springsteen. Right now there's no Aretha Franklin. And there might not have been Clive Davis' hit maker either. He was never drawn to music. In fact, he began his career as a lawyer. I was plucked out of a law firm mm -hmm. to become chief lawyer for Columbia Records. Okay. Three years out of law school. Law school. Mm -hmm. I did that for five years and then made head of Columbia Records. Okay. Yes. With no training in music. None. Did you think you'd be good at this? I never thought I would have a musical ear. I never thought I'd have a natural gift. No way. Do you play an instrument? No. No. <laughs> okay. How did you learn to be good and as good as you are at this job? You don't learn to be good. You don't. You just do what came natural. I'm fascinated by your ear. For, let me feel it, make sure it's a real ear. Wait a second. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. yep. It, it does feel like a real you ear. You can touch my ear anytime. <laughs> it does feel like a real ear, but this is the thing that's fascinating about your ears, because they call you the, the man with the golden ears. You're a master at all of the genres because of those golden ears. It's a gift that I found I had that I never knew I had, whether it's an artist or a song. Is an inspiration to everybody in the music business and most of all to me. On the red carpet at his recent 90th birthday party, the artists say the secret to Davis's success is mutual respect. He's completely artist friendly and the artist always comes first. There are so many accolades for you that, uh, that night, but I love Wyclef John who said on the red carpet. You see how all these rappers be trying to act like they gangsters? Clive Davis is the real gangster. What do you think he meant by that? <laughs> I think he meant that I have a very special connection with artists, with music. I certainly know I had it with him. How will I know if he really loves me? And he had it with Whitney Houston. And I will always love you. Heard you describe her as close to you as a daughter. Were you aware of the struggles that she was having at the time that she was having them? I probably was not aware. I never saw it. Mm -hmm. She was always on top of her game when With we you. were playing. But when I did see it, I did confront her. She listened, but she didn't agree. But then a few years later, she did make a valiant effort, right. yeah. you know, to rehab. 48 hours before she passed away, we spent the afternoon in L.A. She was so looking forward to life, so looking forward to making another album. 
that to this day, it, you know, shakes me up to realize the power of drugs. How do you know what a hit single sounds like? I couldn't explain it to you if I tried. Really? The answer is, I do know. I do know when I hear a hit song. Yeah, yeah. And so Simon and Garfunkel will never forget that when they played me Bridge Over Troubled Water, I said, that has got to be the first single. It was so classic, and it still to this day is my favorite song. So let's wrap up with this. You know, uh, you're, you're known for your golden ear. You're known for your nose for talent. Let's end with you pick a song and we'll sing us out of this interview. Can you sing, Clive? No. Yes, you can. Oh, I can. Yes, you can. Yes, I can. No, I can. <laughs> I okay. wish I could. You got to know what you can do, <laughs> and you got to know what you can't do. So that all right. Well, well. Can you just pick a song just for you and I that we could just end this interview with, and we'll sing it together because like I can't a sing bridge it. Bridge over, over troubled, troubled water. I will lay me down like, like a bridge, bridge over troubled, troubled water. water. The greatest song and the most touching, meaningful, beautiful song that you and I have just I will lay me partly down. ruined. Yes. <laughs> Clive, we are both very bad. High five on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, the crew is so bad. <laughs> Keep the audience there are howling like dogs in there. Oh! <laughs> Listen, I adore Clive Davis. That was a lot of fun. You know, he's 90 years old. He has no plans to slow down. He says, once a song hits the top 20, he listens to it just to make sure that he still can hear what other people hear, that it's a hit. And Kenny G had the best story, I think, on the red carpet because he said he has a, one of the best-selling uh, Christmas albums. Clive wanted no vocals, but it went to a hit. And Clive said if you put vocals, it would have sold 100 million more. Clive Davis. Legend. Gangsta. Gail. A gangster. Yeah, <laughs> a gangster. include that singing. I saw Clive turn down his hearing aid. <laughs> <laughs>